Welcome to Creativity in the Startup World, a series of conversations curated by the Trampery for the Aldridge Foundation's Creative World of Work Week. For this session, I'll be speaking to Francis Cookson, who is co-founder of Rewritten. Rewritten was created in 2016 by friends Katie Arnott and Francis Cookson, who, frustrated by the choices of bridesmaids dresses out there, decided to create their own. Luckily, Francis is a fashion designer and Katie has some pretty crazy business skills. Designed for all those awesome bridesmaids out there, their dresses are chic, sophisticated, and take an entirely modern approach to bridal wear. Their entire collection is hand-designed in London, where they create contemporary designs in the most beautiful fabric and color combinations. I sat down with co-founder of Rewritten Francis to talk about her academic background, the importance of sustainability, and what she looks for when hiring people for her team. So without further ado, sit back and enjoy this session with co-founder of Rewritten, Francis Cookson. I thought I thought this this was quite an interesting question actually. I guess I have a different I have a, one perspective on it in that I went to quite a classical art college. So I went to Edinburgh College of Art, which is much more of a fine art art school. So I did a lot of drawing and painting. Like the first year course was a general foundation course, and then you split off into your specialist um, courses and the first year course you did sculpture um, kind of fine art uh, painting drawing like illustration all different kinds of art so my degree that it was very much um, kind of sketching and like lots of life drawing we did a lot of a lot of drawing and I don't think we did much in terms of technical drawing on computers and things so the computer aided design element I actually felt I missed out on a little bit from taking that course. So I think you don't need to have, you don't need to be amazing at drawing, I don't think, but I think it depends on maybe the art school that you choose to go to or the kind of course that you choose to do. Mm. And also when you do fashion design, you end up drawing, whether you whether it's a fine art focused degree or not, you end up drawing so much and just like continuously drawing, like sketching figures and sketching designs and items of clothing that you'll get you'll get better at it anyway once you when you come out of art school like I took a break for ages I went into PR and marketing and did all sorts of things and worked for different brands which I think was definitely the right thing to do starting your own brand or designing for yourself straight out of art school is quite an overwhelming thing to do and you don't really know a lot about how business works or about how brand works I mean the thing that I found a real struggle with starting rewritten or the thing I didn't know a lot about was manufacturing and they don't teach you anything to do with that in fashion design and fashion design degrees you know you can come out and you can know how to pattern cut and how to draw good technical drawing and design a, an item of clothing but how do you then move on to that next stage of actually putting that into practice and maybe that's changed now maybe there are degrees that offer you more skills in the manufacturing process and kind of contacts mm. and, and things like that but certainly not when I it anyway right and so if you could if you could switch like if you could have done a degree more focused on that side of things do you think that would have been more helpful than doing a, a more art creative focused degree or it, yeah it probably would have been more helpful but you I still it. love the degree I still love the degree that I did because I enjoy more of the creative the artistic side of things and mm -hmm. actually because of the way that my business is set up with my business partner who is more business focused mm -hmm. it kind of allows for me to be the more creative side of uh, of the of the brand yeah. um so i but but if we, having said that it would be useful to have some more technical skills um and technical knowledge when it comes to manufacturing and the production process because i think that's the most challenging bit <laughs> I mean, we, Katie and I have this joke because if, uh, if, if my personal style was entirely reflected in the collection, it would be varying shades of grey or like black and white because I don't really like colour. I don't wear colour, just don't do it. But obviously we use a lot of like bright, bold colours. And, and I have, having said that, probably the other way around, rewritten is reflected on my personal style. I've started to wear more colour as a result. Um, I think shape-wise or silhouette-wise, definitely the dresses are all dresses that we would wear and when we initially when i initially designed the the first collection they were dresses that we would want to we would want to wear as a bridesmaid and it was pr pretty much as simple and straightforward as that and i think there's no better kind of way of designing 
an item of clothing than like actually looking at it practically and like what would I want from this item of clothing you know when you're designing a dress bridesmaid's dress like do you want to be able to wear a bra with it do you want to you know do you want it to cinch you in at the waist do you want it to be a-line do you want it to be figure hugging like all of those different things and then you can kind of throw that all in and you end up with some different designs and then also designs that work for different occasions you know uh, maybe slightly more dressed up and slightly more dressed down but yeah definitely my personal style has gone into the the silhouettes but the colors have more influenced me the kind of focus of our brand to begin with is that it, they're dresses that you want to wear again and again so we call it sustainable bridesmaids dressing so that in the con the concept in itself that is the concept i think for aspiring designers it's so much easier now i think sustainability is so at the forefront of, of everything that we're all doing and i think it's much easier to start a brand being sustainable than to transition one to being sustainable and so i think that's where you know like when we started we weren't always using the most sustainable practices and that's it's trying to make that transition and keep it within the right you know price point and you know your customers already expect something of you so trying to give them the same thing but in a sustainable way it's definitely more challenging whereas if you start out sustainably and you know that's what you are from day one with in terms of like the fabrics and things that you're using then it is much it's much easier you know for instance we're launching a mini bridal range at the end at the beginning of next year january 2021 entirely using recycled fabrics and organic silks entirely made in the UK and it's, it's a very mini collection but because it's a new collection for us it's been a lot more straightforward to do that than making changes to an existing product. There are different things you could do at home so you can be from a kind of drawing perspective or sketching or designing you could be practicing you can just be doing it over and over again and you know there are various like online courses that you could take in like technical drawing um, there are a few like pattern cutting courses. I guess they're more physical. So like whether you can actually do them from home, I don't, I'm not sure. Like Fashion Enter has a few like starter courses in pattern cutting. And then I guess there are like resources like Common Objective and, you know, signing up for like Business of uh, Fashion and like Vogue Business and all the different kind of newsletters and just learning as much as you can, practicing and learning. And then also just like being creative in other ways as well to keep yourself kind of stimulated. I think, yeah, you're right, like skills is, well, obviously, because if it's an intern, you're taking them from school age, but I think it's just the enthusiasm and willingness to learn and not kind of being too big for any small job. You know, in small businesses, I mean, like I still, I pack orders, you know, we like we all kind of, we all muck in. In, in a small business, everyone does everything and, I think as you're, if you're an intern and you're thrown into that, you kind of want to like absorb that. And that's almost the best bit about it is that you get to see maybe things like the inner workings of a business that you wouldn't see if you were going into a bigger brand. Yeah. Um, but just showing enthusiasm and wanting to, wanting to learn and wanting and like asking questions, you know, like it's a great opportunity to come in and ask the founders of a business, like how does the back end of the website work? Like what kind of card payment system do you use? You know, like things that, you would never get to ask a founder ordinarily um, of a big brand, but if you're there like on a daily basis, like we don't mind, you know, those questions being asked. We want people to learn, and then you you can get so much like useful knowledge from it. I think that questions point is, I totally agree with that. You know, I think the 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 most I got out of those things in the beginning was literally just annoying them like you know it's literally yeah. just being like ask every question that comes into your mind like no question is too stupid to ask yeah. like if you knowledge is power isn't it and once you know those things you know you might not want to set up your brand but when you go in and work you know how like you say the back end works or you know how much it takes to ship or something like that which yeah. is stuff that will make you different from someone who just goes in and goes like i like to draw or like i like to design. Yeah. you know what i mean exactly and that's that's all the stuff that i mean from working in smaller brands before starting my own brand mm. a lot of that i knew but then also there was a lot of that, that i was like i wish i could go into a brand right now and sit down and say right wait a minute how do you do this on the back end of your website and like yeah exactly which which shipping provider do you use and it's yeah it's invaluable <laughs> But I don't know, wanting to maybe make a difference, wanting to make something better. Um, you know, you have a, 
uh, some people who aren't creative don't necessarily have that drive to, to do that, to want to change something, to want to adapt something, or to want to invent something that's even better. Mm. Whereas creative people do. They want to, they, and, they, and they kind of, I don't know, yeah, they want to, they want to change, change the world for, to, make it, to make it better or change something to make it better. No, I definitely think it's something that can be developed. I think people are probably too um, quick to say, oh, I'm not a creative person or to say, oh, I am a creative person. But I think everyone has a level of creativity. Mm. I don't think anyone's just straightforward and not creative. You know, I think because even if I look at our, our business partnership and Katie and I, I'm more deemed as the creative one and Katie less so. But actually, Katie's very creative as well. And, you know, she brings a lot of her creativity to the table um, just because she's not the one who draws the dresses or whatever. It doesn't mean that she's not she's not creative. She's creative in different ways. And I don't think you have to be creative in straightforward ways. Right. And have you sort of, you know, because you went to school to, to study art and to be, I guess, a better creator. I guess that's why you go. I did the same thing. So I yeah. guess that's why we did it. But do you feel like since then, how, how have you... This is this wasn't one of the questions, but just personally thinking about it, like, have yeah. you continued to try and become a better creative, or is it now like this is who I am, and like my skill is my skill, and you know you might be inspired in different ways, but you don't necessarily like develop your creativity in different ways. How do you see that now? I think it's interesting because I think my creativity has developed in some ways because it's developed in the way that rewritten has kind of molded it. Um, you know, I, I guess my creativity is probably, no, not, not less creative. How do I say this? It's probably more commercial in a way because rewritten, I'm designing very much for like, you know, like how is a bridesmaid going to want to wear that rather than, oh, this ridiculous kind of shape that no one's going to want to actually wear to a wedding because it's just crazy and it would look great on a catwalk but isn't going to work for a wedding. So I guess creativity, um, sorry, rewritten is like moulded that. Um, I wish I was more creative still in other aspects of my life. Like I feel like I still like seeing and things in a choir, but like I don't kind of do as much. Well, I don't do as much like painting for instance, or kind of other, other kind of artistic like hobbies. I don't play the piano anymore. I don't play like the clarinet anymore. I used to do those things mm. a long time ago. <laughs> but I kind of, you know, like I kind of feel like, I should pick up on some of that other creativity again. Yeah, yeah, but then running your own business gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, but then I think those things can come around in like in time, can't they? It could be something that you know, fifteen, twenty years, maybe when you're doing something completely different. But then all of a sudden you go, "Hang on, let me try that again," and then it opens up that part of your brain again. It's not. Yeah. It was all useful. Well, that's it. It never goes away. I mean, I did like marketing for like ten years, right, and mm. then came back to it. <laughs> I think inspiration wise, um, because we, yeah, because we work a little differently to like a regular like fashion brand and you're kind of, you can go away and create, I don't know, come up with inspiration like under the sea or whatever. I don't know. We, we don't, we don't necessarily have that. Like, so I'm more coming up with different styles or maybe mini collections that sit within the collection. And I suppose the inspiration that I get is probably from the people that I meet and the women that I meet because we still do a lot of our own appointments and host appointments in our showroom and meeting the customer is the most is just the most invaluable thing that I can do as a designer because actually I see what works and what doesn't work and what people want mm. and how fabric hangs on different figures and different heights and different shapes so actually I think I take my inspiration from the women that I've met and how they want to dress and what they're looking for um. It's challenging because there's no time limit on creativity, as you said, you know, you could sit there for an hour and do some of the best designs you've ever done, or you could sit there for three days and not come up with anything that's any good. And whereas we're used to living our lives in this kind of, okay, sit down nine to five or nine to six or whatever it is, and I've got to crack on, and I've got these meetings and these emails to do, but, but it's, it's just a totally different process. And if you try and do it within a kind of, time constraint of like, right, I've got two hours before my next meeting, let's try and, you know, design the next collection. It's just not gonna happen. You kind of have to like, let go of that and like, yeah, okay, if the week means you've, you, you know, you're just kind of walking around, going for walks and then going for lunch or whatever, but if you get the designing done, it, it kind of, it's the only way it can work.
yeah it's a great point man and i think I, me personally i'm still learning to do that like i I still put like two hours in and it's like creative time. It's like, you, you yeah. might <laughs> like, why are you trying to do it that way? Um, but you, I guess you learn, don't you? You learn to be better on yourself when it's not going well. Like, yeah. See, I think now, like what a lot of people experience during lockdown, that being like, Oh, I should be really creative. I've got all this time. And it's like, yeah, but you're also quite anxious and you're also quite scared. And those aren't great emotions sometimes when you want to make yeah. products or things. Um, I, yeah, I definitely learned that during lockdown and it was like this pressure to be really, you know, you can be really um, uh, productive and get loads of work done because, you know, you're sitting at home. It's like, well, actually, I'm pretty depressed about what's going on right now and like business isn't brilliant. No, I, I don't feel motivated and happy and wanting to kind of work for hours and then so like you just take a day off and restart, you know, the day after that because it's just not going to work. Um.